Okay guys, in this lesson we're going to do a head turn. So um, a head turn is very different as far as the movement goes to what we did in the last lesson, in the last part. Um, but the method we're going to use is exactly the same. So we're going to start, we're going to do our two keyframes, do a breakdown, and then we'll start working on our timing via uh, the ease in and ease out, and then we'll do our in-betweens. All right, so let's uh, let's get started. So again, just work as uh, quick as you can, nice and loose. I think what I'm doing here is I've got him a little bit too side on for my liking. So we'll uh, straighten him up a bit. And with this one, what we'll do is we'll actually start with the uh, doing the body as well. So we won't separate them. We might as well get them done in uh, one, one go. Alright, not too bad. Okay, so let's uh, move forwards here. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's finish off our second keyframe here. And we're going to have a very extreme position, or rather a very uh, different position from the position we started in. So we're going to turn his head. We're going to move it over a bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lowering the chin down because when you are uh, when you talk believe it or not your uh, upper lip doesn't move you move the jaw down so everything rotates from this part here Okay, looking pretty good. Probably spent a little bit too long on that drawing, but that's okay. So the next step is to uh, put in our breakdown. So what I'm going to do for the breakdown, again, when, he's, when you turn your head from side to side, 
you will naturally lower your head just a little bit, not a lot, just a tiny bit. Um, but we're going to exaggerate that, drop the head way down, put some uh, squash and stretch in there. And the other thing that you do when you uh, turn your head is you naturally blink. Now there are obviously occasions where this doesn't happen, but for the most part, if you're not thinking about it and you turn your head from one side to the other, um, you will you will blink. Um, a good a good thing to do is just to if you've got somebody in the same room as you, just ask them. Just say, hey, can you uh, look over there? Get them to turn their head, and more often than not they will uh, do a little blink. So this is our breakdown. So uh, because we're doing our body at the same time, we have to start thinking about our secondary movement. So first, the head's coming down. So secondly, we're going to add the shoulders going up just a bit. Okay. Okay, so now let's uh start working on our timing. That looks about about right for me. So let's uh put our anticipation in here. We want him going the other direction. Whoops. You have to forgive that. Flash, flash uh, does uh, have its little uh, quirks every now and then. So what I'm doing here is I'm turning his head completely on the side. Again, working on that anticipation, so getting him to move in the opposite direction. The other thing I might do is I might uh, tilt this picture a bit. Give it a little bit more uh, dynamic feel. Drop those shoulders down just a tad. And the other thing you'll notice that uh, to keep the timing between the first first frame and the next frame, what I've done is that when I put this frame in here, I actually added so added an extra frame in here. So originally we had uh, when I finished the breakdown and started working on the timing, I had the key frame, three three frames, the breakdown, and then another three frames. Okay, uh, this will allow me to put some uh, in-betweens in here very evenly which is uh, very ideal for, for what I'm doing here it makes it a lot easier on me maths wise okay um, so I wanted to keep that so I added another frame in uh, when I when I did that instead of just going here and uh, making another keyframe alright so I'm gonna do the same thing here so 
I'll add in another frame so I can keep the same timing like so. All right, so let's uh, start working on our follow through now. And again with this one here, just having it down by, you know, just turning it a little bit adds a lot to it, but doesn't add as much as perhaps tilting it up would, would do. So what I'm going to do, and this is one of the beautiful things about uh, animating digitally, is we have the ability to change this very easily. If we were drawing this, it would... Uh, It'd be a lot more difficult and take a lot more time to make those alterations like that. In some cases it might mean drawing a completely new picture. So again, dropping these shoulders down. And what I might do this time um, is I might add in another frame in between these two frames. So uh, add another frame in there, and let's uh, let's in between this just a, a tad more. So what I want to, I want to try and get a more smooth ease out on this movement here. Um, to just make it a little bit more dynamic than what it is currently. For the, uh, the first part where we did the surprised expression, it was good for him to snap into that position, really snap into it, added some uh, nice dynamics in there. However, for now, for this one rather, what I want to do is I want to have him ease out a bit more, make it a little bit more natural, well not natural, but a little bit more smooth and controlled. And again, the timing is essentially the same. Have a look, see. I think that's much better. Let's uh, test it here. I know that's going really fast, but uh, get the general idea. All right, let's add our uh, in between frames in here and see what it looks like. So you can see the method that I'm using is, is exactly the same, you know. Working on the, the key, key frames first, okay, and then working on our timing. And that's the most important thing. Before you go in between, you really need to start working on that timing to get it just right.
that's that's what's going to give you the you know Disney quality broadcast quality uh, animation so what I'm doing here to add a little bit more life to the movement is I'm giving him a bit of a head tilt as he comes around this corner here for this uh, in-between frame and that's the other thing you want to do is you want to break things up don't have them you know flat always in the same position in the same pose all the time you know get as many different angles in there as you can changing up just that small this small head tilt will make a huge difference to the feel of the animation and making it look a lot more believable and ultimately at the end of the day that's what we want we want to sell these animations to everybody making them as believable as possible And let's jump straight over to this next one, and then we'll have a look at it after that. And again, I think I want to keep that uh, head tilt that I had with the other in-between one coming out of this one. Have his mouth starting to open a little bit here. Like so. Alright, now uh, let's have a look see. So uh, what we might do, just to make it a bit easier to view, is we'll add some frames front and at the end here. have it now obviously uh, if this was a broadcast broadcast um, project that I'm working on I would go in here and I'd add these in betweens or I'd have somebody else in the studio working with me that would go through and add these in between frames here that just I haven't gone through and, and bothered with yet but you know if this was just for the web um, you know, you don't you don't need to have them in there to get a nice smooth looking movement. Certainly, if you're uh, doing character animation for games, and the characters you know only going to be little on the screen, you know it looks quite smooth already without adding those extra frames in there. And you don't you don't have to draw every single thing. Okay, it's about making the uh, the viewer believe what's going on. Okay, you have to convince him that there's more there than what there actually is. Okay, guys, so uh, while I've got you here, what I might do is uh, this is a good time to talk about uh, smear frames. So a smear frame is a frame that we would put in if this movement was much faster. So instead of him, you know, doing a a slow head turn, this isn't particularly slow, but uh, it's not really fast either. If he was doing a really fast head turn, 
your first thought, um, first of all, I'll just stop there and uh, take these frames, the start and the end out, so we just have the animation. Your first thought might be, oh, I'll just take out these blank frames in here. And, uh, you know, that'll speed it up, which it will, but it won't look natural. So if I take these frames out here, you can see that it's faster, but it doesn't have that sense of urgency and speed that snapping your head around would get you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo all those frames here. And we're going to talk about smear frames. So, with our two in-between frames here, I'm just going to snap over, delete it, and we're going to do a smear frame. So, this frame here of the head facing us, that's the next frame. And this frame here of the head side on, that's the previous frame. So when we're doing a smear frame, we always want to put more emphasis in the, the next frame as opposed to the previous frame. So I'm going to start off here. And you'll, you'll soon uh, get the hang of it and uh, see what I mean by a smear frame. They're going to smear together, basically. Smear frames are very good for uh, very big movements that are fast. Um, they add a real natural feel to it, like they've got motion blur. Okay. Now, obviously, the timing's a little bit off. Uh, we'll fix that in a second after we do our next smear frame. But you can see already that's uh, looking pretty good. So let's go to this in-between here. Let's kill it. Now, this is our next frame. So this is the one we want to focus on. Just stretch everything out, basically. Like so. Now, smear frames, sometimes you, you draw them and they will look fantastic. Other times, they, they just won't. But the good thing about them is they're not on the screen for very long at all, so your eye won't pick up, you know, whether it's a particularly good drawing or not. So uh, it takes a little weight off your shoulders. Let's have a look, see. Alright, so now is when we start playing around with removing these frames here. So let's take this one out and let's uh, see what that does. Let's put that one back in there. I think what we'll do is uh, let's take out the space between these two here. There we go. That's uh, made it heaps better. And the other thing we can do is we can take out this, uh, sometimes it works to take out this uh, in-between frame here. 
Um, we'll give it a go and see what it looks like. There we go. And you can see that looks way faster and way more dramatic than what we had previously had. Now another good example of a, a smear frame would be a much, much bigger movement. So, say for example, for starting over here, and then on this last frame, we're finishing all the way over here. Now somewhere in between here, do our smear frame. And you can see that gives you a really nice motion blur effect. Um, and smears are, can be used not just with head movement, but with any movement. And I would encourage you to use them um, as much as you possibly can.